Hello, I'm David DeCosmo. Welcome to ECTV Live. I'm joined by my co-host, Rusty Fender. Rusty, hey, good to see you, Dave. Hey, good topic this, today. Our this topic is, is topic. right up your alley That's because absolutely. when I think of area amusement parks, I know, well, you, you'll have plenty to add, but that. our guest today is Tim Nabotsky, who is, along with his brother, in the process right now of putting a documentary together on an amusement park that Oh, thrilled thousands of people over the years. Hanson's Park, which was located at Harvey's Lake, Pennsylvania. Hi, Tim. And How's it going? Thanks. Oh, Thanks for boy, having Tim, me, guys. Tim, we think about all the parks that, mm. that, that used to be. Yes. And Hanson's was certainly, uh, you know, the top five or so in, in northeastern Pennsylvania. What prompted the idea in the first place to do a documentary about it? It's been gone a long time. Uh, well, I, I'm a filmmaker, and I moved to the area with my wife from Los Angeles and uh, it's I noticed that a lot of history in this area is going away um, and and if we don't do something to preserve it it's gonna be gone forever and no one's ever gonna know about it and so one of the things that really got me sparked interest in doing amusement parks was uh, Angela Park because I lived so close to the area right down near Hazleton along Route 309 sure which was everything including a former state police training ground for a while in that area right, right. Yeah, so we did that. I did that documentary, and that came out great, and I loved it. I had a lot of fun doing it for Samsung Productions, um, and I wanted to do another one because there's so much fun, and it's really cool to get film from, like, the early 1900s, and you get to see, like, you, it's really neat to see, like, a Ford Model T driving down the road and people sure, getting yeah, out sure, and trying to sure. get onto a ride. So I said, hey, let's do another one, and my brother's like, yeah, let's, let's do one up in this area, and we heard about Hanson's being a big amusement park, and uh, so we decided to give that a shot. Yeah, and you know, one thing that's kind of, uh, in one sense, handy about old amusement parks is that as long as 8 millimeter movie film existed, dads and moms took their kids to these parks, and some of those dads and moms in inevitably affluent, shot movies. Affluent dads and moms, because well, the processing in those days was a right. fortune. Yeah, yeah that's but, the, but the thing. The film is out there, but you've got to find it. Right, and that's, that's what we're hoping this show does. I hope if anyone has film, uh, they get in contact. Hopefully, you'll get their information from us and uh, to us, and we'll be able to get film from you guys because hopefully we'll be able to get all the things that we need to recreate the park. So as if you were never there, because a lot of people weren't, um, that you can actually feel like you were there uh, again. Yeah, now Hanson's Park, again, was at Harvey's Lake. And um, at one time, strictly my own opinion, I think ha uh, uh, Harvey's Lake was far more of a welcoming place to the public in general. You had the park. The park had one of two drive-in theaters located at right. the lake. Um, but over the years, the, the lake itself and its environs have become a lot more uh, private, more like you know, people that have the property there use the lake. Very few people, I think, grab their boats and decide I'm going up to Harvey's Lake to, to go around my motorboat. They probably more likely go to Wall and Palm Bay. You're right. In the right. 50s and 60s, it was a different deal. People welcomed the sandy beach area on the far side of the lake as the mecca for uh, dancing and dining and rock and roll bands, which were coming in vogue as then. When I was at the radio station at KRZ, we did a lot of live broadcasts from there because if you remember, David, uh, in the early 90s, they renovated the dance hall. Right, right. And although the amusement park was long gone and long dilapidated and long closed, the, the dance hall on the second floor of the, the snack bar on the far side of the lake was open for summer concerts at the lake. So it was kind of like a 19, it was a 1989 till about 1992, then the concerts went out again. It was called the Bud Light series. Bud Light, the Budweiser Rear sponsored it. So it kind of had a little resurgence in the late 80s and 90s. Not the park, but again, an element of it with the dance hall uh, in the area not too far from Sandy Beach. And, and Hanson's as a destination for entertainment. Correct. Uh, that, that part then, that continued. Correct. Um, <clears throat> you, of course, Rocky, are uh, uh, Rusty, also well aware of the railroad connection because many amusement parks right. started because of trolley lines. That's correct. At the terminus right. of the trolley Absolutely line right. very often was an amusement park, and that was the case in Hanson. And I told, uh, and I told Tim, and, and again, that the, the uh, Lehigh Valley, originating in, in Pittston Junction, the Coxton Yard, still there, had a branch that went to the Harvey's Lake. I have one of the crossing 
actually two of them. One I donated to Steamtown for the grand opening at Steamtown, right behind this building. The second I have in my, my climate control garage, along with a whistle post, which meant with the W on the sign to blow the whistle back in those days, the steam whistle, because there was a crossing coming up. So the branch, the Harvey's Lake branch, went all the way along, which is now the walking trail, near Pizza Perfect on the cliffs of Dallas, Trucksville, Shavertown. It, it skirted the mountain, crossed Lake Street, where now the big roundabout is being put in for the five-way right. intersection mm -hmm. of Lake Street, and continued along what is now 309, then 415, all the way to the lake, and they had a Y. So the train would approach the Knoxon train station, the freight station, the passenger station. It was only a, a short distance to walk to Harvey's Lake from there. So the train would be engined first into the train station. After it unloaded the passengers, it would back up and then, using the Y, be then facing the opposite direction for the trip back to Lehigh Valley. But you're right, long before roads in that area, long before 309 and 415, it was just the Lehigh Valley Railroad that served that park. And Truly incredible. That, that's how initially everybody got to, that's to right. the parks. Plus there was no interstates. So a lot Absolutely. of people don't know that. They're like, yeah, oh, well, sure. go on 80 and just exactly. sure, right sure. there, but you couldn't. And because, partially because there is an interstate, uh, there, Luna Park is no longer Correct. in existence. Because uh, 81 is over Luna, is most of it is paved over you, Luna you Park. Think, yeah. You think back, and all right, Hanson's, Angela, uh, Sansui, Rocky Glen, Croups Grove, Croups uh, Grove, uh, down in uh, Hunlock Creek, Hunlock Hunlock Creek, Creek. area, uh, Toby Park, up uh, along Route 115 near near Blakesley Corners. There were so many. I'm sure as you're doing your research, the number of parks that we had at one time. Oh, there was a ton of parks in Pennsylvania. A ton of small <laughs> parks, like just like uh, Knobles that we know now. There was a ton of those all over the place. Uh, I believe from when the research, when I was doing Angela Park, there was like 68 of them in Pennsylvania alone. So wow. there was always a place to go. And the sad part, in the 70s, these parks were killed off because everybody wanted the bush theme, amusement parks, the great adventures in Jackson, New Jersey. It wasn't cool in the 70s to go to Rocky Glen. It wasn't cool to go to, Har you know, to Hanson's at Harvey's Lake. Now a roller coaster great adventure costs more than the whole park costs, just the roller coaster. Oh yeah. So it was, but you know, the pendulum swings back. And now those parks, Retro's and, back, and yeah. absolutely, yeah. just the memories of them is enough to carry a great documentary like this forward. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping people remember it and want to see it again. You know, I think that's the whole purpose is trying to bring it back so people could remember it. And you know what, maybe it'll spark someone's interest and say, sure. hey, Let's try to build a small amusement park again because, like you said, these mega parks are so expensive to go to. Uh, my daughter wanted to go to Dorney Park. It costs three hundred dollars for three people. That's and that's just Allentown. Day. Yeah. That's just Allentown. That's yeah. not even a yeah. universal theme right. park. Yeah. yeah so and, and yeah, and the others were more like uh, Knobles, where you didn't pay to get in necessarily. Correct. Uh, so uh, Grandma and Grandpa could take the grandkids, and Grandma and Grandpa weren't riding you know, the roller coaster, but you could sit there and, and have a snack and watch the kids right. enjoy right. the coaster or, or whatever else they're on. Now, your research has already yielded some pictures, and right. you have one of these machines that I don't use. So it's called a tablet. That's what I was <laughs> That was my next guess. Uh, how about pulling up one or two of them there? I'll try to sure. hold them, and I'll see if we can actually show what you've come across. Yeah, we got a lot of interesting film. I would like, we would like more film. Uh, we got a lot of interesting photos, obviously, uh, because we don't have the whole park covered. So it would be nice to show all the rides that they had, all the train, the, the whole train. And the and they did have a lot. Uh, when I did. was at uh, WMJW Radio, we had a, a day uh, at uh, at Hanson's. That's where you and I met, by the way. Yes, On yeah, top of yeah. Plymouth Mountain back in yeah. I, what the I remember 1979. There, they had one of those... Uh, uh, one of those fun houses yes. that used to be a big thing. Yes. All right, let me see if I can get this oh, where... Let me just punch it back. Can, uh, I think your finger might be touching to, one of the okay. buttons there. Let's tap this right there. Did I do it? Yeah, oh, that's good. That's yep. video. That's, let, let me just do this one more right. time. You guys can chitter, chitter chat. It's okay. Yeah, well, I, I'm looking over your shoulder because I'm, I'm having some memories myself uh, as, as this... When, I, when we had those projects there, it was... The park had already kind of started on the downhill slide where, as you say, they weren't as popular as, uh, as once. What am I seeing here? This is actually a 1914 photo from the uh, ski ball, I believe. 
that they had oh, inside. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, one of the interesting things about Hanson's Park is it was around for a really long time. And it actually changed hands from the beginning to the Hansons. It wasn't originally the Hansons Park to start with. Oh. So, now, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's it was, really interesting. I believe they acquired it in the 30s or maybe even the late 20s. I and, did not know that. Uh, so, and then they started adding more rides because I think the Carousel and the Dodgem cars were there first. Um, and so this would actually be prior to Hanson's Park. This would be whatever it was called then. Mm -hmm. I, I don't quite remember it. I'm still going through all the research. Sure, in 1914. Yeah, do I yeah. don't know that myself. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, and apparently the, these photos here, this is the, uh, I've never even heard of it, a radio. Uh, so, like, it's really cool to see some of these, these rides that they had at the park. Most of these things by today's standards were probably not safe. Um, Absolutely. Which yeah. made it yeah. even more fun. Let's, I mean, if, it's not, <laughs> well, that's if right. it's not safe, it's fun. That's a funny line, but you're right. It made no, it more no, and I'm thinking of pictures that I've seen of, uh, I believe, uh, Dreamland in uh, Coney Island. Yes. And some of those rides, they had one where it was like a giant sliding board, but shoot ra the shoots. rather than a slide, Remember it, that? Was, it was Shoot ponies. the shoots. You and there was rode, ponies, yeah. the polo ponies down. But that's, right. that's, that's why, in my mind, part of the reason the parks disappeared was the insurance costs. Yeah, insurance was definitely a big thing. Undoubtedly. Yeah. Undoubtedly. Everybody says the same thing, insurance. Yeah, I tried contacting the, original, or the, the owner that took over Angela Park after the Barlettas sold it. And one of the things that I knew that he was a ride inspector. And it cost him a ton of money to get the, uh, there was like a sky ride where you would yes, sit on the yeah, chair sure. and go around it. Apparently, there was no safety features on this thing whatsoever. You could literally lift a bar and jump sure. off if your you wanted to. Your legs hung out yeah. over this concrete parking lot with just this bar. You picked up over your head. There was no head. shut off. So, like, if anything happened, it would just would have kept running. Oh, There's no gosh, way that you could turn it off. Once you got it going, it was going. So, I, I, I do know that the guy uh, spent, he spent quite a bit of money to try to get that thing up to today's safety standards. So, yeah, there was definitely some, some things there. And, and I, I think that's probably why most of these parks don't exist is the insurance well, costs. Well, and, and, and keep in mind that in spite of some uh, very, very tight regulations these days, we've had some fatal accidents within the past right. year or two at some of those bigger name parks. I say at the major Lord. corporation parks yet. Yeah, yeah. the big names. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, but, but I mean, you still had a lot of fun. <laughs> Unfortunately, people did get hurt. But uh, uh, what I know about Hanson's is they had this giant log in the, in the lake, you would jump off this high dive, and then there was this big long tree log, and you would try to stand on it. And that was one of the things that they would do: is like they would try to stand on it. You could see people rolling on it. I mean, you could just imagine, you know, slipping and hitting your head on this log. None of them had like life jackets on. There was no life. It was like pure chaos if you think yeah. about it. But yeah. the amount of fun they probably had doing it, it was just. You, you know, the funny part too in those days, it, it's a whole other era now. In those days, nobody wanted to be an ambulance chaser and slip on the banana peel right. and sue the park for, a, for $10 million. It was a whole gentler, kinder area. <laughs> now, an, an, an era. Now, you know, if something happened, you fell in the water, you'd own the park I, <laughs> at right. the end of the day. I, you know? just, I just did a blog about a week ago. I had my three-year-old grandson to a playground. It was in the Wilkesbury area. I, I walked onto the playground area with him and I felt like I was walking on a, on a soft rubber foam. And I thought to myself, I remember playing on playgrounds that were not as elaborate and the, the floor was made of rocks and dirt. Right, that's right. Yeah. So and did I. You fell down, you so hit the rocks. It was all gravel dirt. and rock. And I yeah. was wondering how many of us actually survived and played on those. Yeah. Most, most of us actually did. Yeah, I think we got uh, injured a lot more. Right. Uh, one of the, I mean, I remember doing the Angela Park documentary. They had a slide there that you would go down in like a little, like a knapsack. It was like a wooden slide. And everyone that I was talking to said they would always get caught by a nail and they would rip their shirt or they would get... Is that amazing? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, but you would never have a ride that would injure a person like 90% of the time at your park anymore. It's just... <laughs> no. And everyone I talked to said they either got terrible skid burns from the sides of it or they, they got caught on a nail that popped up and it ripped their pants Not or Not only that, but they didn't fix it. So people are looking forward to get their shirts ripped open. That's yeah. the sad part about yeah. it, right? They, they enjoyed it. It was a good have, time. Have you been back to the Hanson site? I have. I actually uh, been in contact with Bruce Hansen. He actually lives right next to where Hansen's Park used to be. Um, but there isn't really much left. They now built a giant house there, and there's another house in construction, um, and a lot of it's fenced off. So it's there's really I I really can't see where Hansen's used to be by today's standards. 
by some of the photos that I seen and some of the hand-drawn maps that I got from the family, I could see what it was like. Um, but it's it's different from doing something where you can't even see it anymore. As can you, sure. you could still go to Angela sure. Park, it's not there, but you could still see where everything the was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sure. You yeah. can't do that anymore. I think the dance hall is is that still there? That's the building in the front, right on the road. You right. tell is that still there? I, I'm not, I can't remember. Because I haven't been there in a while. I think they may have just torn that Figures. down. Figures. Yeah. And again, that was a two-story, again, dilapidated building. It was dilapidated right. in 1990. We're talking almost 30 years ago, so that's probably gone. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Sansui is now a school site. Yes. Uh, the ultimate insult, uh, insult to kids who oh, used to go to an amusement you're park. Not Hanover area. You're not uh, Rocky Glen is pretty much hidden back in, in uh, you know, wooded area between where you'd normally travel and, and there. As you say, Angela, you can still see where things are. Croops Glen, there is only uh, an archway. Correct. A steel uh, sign. A stone work and then a steel That's sign correct. that shows where Croops Glen uh, was. Uh, Luna that I mentioned, that Rocky, uh, that I keep saying Rocky because I Nayog. You're, so, you're so connected I, I, with Rocky I know, Glen. and I am. I know. Right. Nayog. Uh, yeah. They had the walkway over the, to Luna, which okay. is where 81 runs now. Right. So it's technically so, done more. Yeah. So, yeah. And there's That's very little, very little evidence left of what was there. Uh, Rusty knows of some. Um. So, but that's why this is so important to do these. I mean, because if we don't do something like a documentary to get the film and to get the VHS or whatever's out there, get the photos, people are unfortunately passing away, and and the place is becoming, you know, either taken over by something else or it's just overgrown, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't even know that it was there anymore. And I think the nice part about this is that sometimes you have a loved one that may have passed away and you get, you get these old photos and this old film and you have no interest in, or you don't even have an 18 or eight millimeter or 16 millimeter projector to even play it back. We'll capture the footage for you, we'll send it back, you know, we'll scan the photos, we'll send it back. But the nice thing is, is then you'll get a free copy of the DVD when it's finished um, and, the nice, and we'll be preserving the history of the park that if we don't do it, if we don't jump on it now, all this stuff might be lost forever because film's deteriorating. Pictures are deteriorating. Right. And yeah. if we don't yeah, that's right. get them into a digital form and get it out there, it's not going to be useful Here's the good anymore. thing about this area that you don't get in Los Angeles is that we have a PBS station, WVIA, that will take these documentaries, these DVDs, and they will air them. Like the Rocky yeah. Glen has yeah. been on ad nauseum. It's been on. And they use that for their pledge drives. Right. And they looked the last time for 100 members, got like 400. Wow. So the interest of not only seeing these in your own in your own TV viewing room, but also on the air on television, is incredible. So these have an entirely different life on television, thanks to a, a public television station here, which caters to the local and regional resources that we have. So this is a winning situation for any sure. of this historical material. Yeah. Well, as you say, it 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 preserves that uh, it. it it makes them alive again, that makes those parks alive again. When did Hanson's actually close down? I believe Hanson's clo closed down in 1984, which is pretty close to the time that Angela Park closed down, which is pretty close to the time that Rocky Glen right. closed down. They all started closing down in the 80s. That's right. It was like the end of, like, because I was born in 82, so I, I even remember telling my parents, I said, what did you guys do? Like, really, what did you guys really mess up that there is no small amusement parks anymore? What happened that all these places that... That's amazing. 84, Rocky Glen was 87. Yeah. So they're yeah. all the same, right? Same, the same time frame. Yeah, yeah, so they all just started closing down. My guess is that the family dynamics changed. So, like, back then, you know, the father would go to work. The kids would stay home in the summer with their, you know, mom and the grandparents. But now today's dynamic changed. Typically, the mom's working. Yeah, the father's that's working. True. The kids go to, like, daycare or somewhere else or... You know, it, so that dynamic isn't Absolutely there anymore. Absolutely right. Yeah. Did, the, did the Hanson family offer you any uh, thoughts as to why they, they closed it down? Um, well, I, I, I feel like uh, I didn't get into that part of the interview yet with uh, Bruce. I haven't actually started asking all the questions. I'm still trying to piece together everything and uh, see what stuff I find. Um, but I feel like most of it is the family just grew, grew away from it. You know, like one of the cases with the Angela Park is none of the kids wanted to take over the park. And naturally. the parents were getting yeah. older. Naturally. And so they were just like, look, we're too old. We're 60 years old and we're trying to run rides and none of the kids sure. want to do this. Um, so well, the kids want a job in computer science, not to you know pull the lever on a roller coaster. Yeah, uh, and that's, yeah, it is. It's the know, generational not, thing. Not, right. not unique to parks, but I can think of some uh, long running uh, restaurants, for instance, where when it got to the third generation, it, it's it stopped. Right. 
Absolutely. Uh, you carried on the, you know, the, the, the grandpa gave it to, to for dad. For so long. Uh, dad gave it to the son and maybe the son went with it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, either, well, another thing is, of course, the value of the land. Yeah, uh, yeah very the, true. For other very uses. True. <clears throat> As you say, there's housing going up uh, and hang up there now. Oh, there's a giant house that they just built on the property for Hansons, and so obviously all that, you will never be able to reclaim that back and turn it into Rocky a Rocky Glen was just sold again to a developer in New Jersey for massive high-end condos overlooking the beautiful lake. How can you, how can you turn down lake, an offer Lancaster like that? Yeah. yeah, how can you yeah. turn down an offer like that? You know, and people from out of town, you know, New Jersey, with the, you know, with the, with the, the, the cost of living out there and the wages are very much higher than around here, you know, a couple of million dollars to, to buy the park you'd never get in the Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. 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 And I guess, uh, I guess you got to put a feather in the cap of the uh, uh, Knoebel family. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, because there's a place that oh, uh, has survived that going. and yes. has been hit yeah. this year alone, hit with at least two floods. Yes, yes. Yes. And uh, usually within days has come back because they have yeah. they have their own uh, their uh, own cleanup uh, crew. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Crew. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, a lot of those uh, parks were prone to flooding. Angela Park flooded a lot yes, too, and I, that Creek. actually hurt them a lot. And that was another reason why the bar let us. Well, down while they were built along trolley lines, they're almost always built along streams as Absolutely well. Absolutely right. It's always water bodies. That's right. They yeah. followed yeah. the natural cut for the stream. That's Our correct. Amazement yeah. parks That's and right. water. And the, you know, now, Hansons didn't have that problem in terms of a stream so much. Right. They had the lake. Yeah, but the, the lake, lake never there. overflowed. So that right. was, you know, that's yeah. why Hansons yeah. survived. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, but of course it didn't eventually. Yeah. Eventually they all closed. closed. Which is why Chip is involved in putting the <laughs> right. documentary together. Yeah. Are, are you actively looking for like photos, for yes. uh, film, for video? Yes, uh, absolutely. If, if anyone out there has any uh, video, if they have film, because I would assume there's not much on VHS or beta. No. Um, film, anything like photos, you name it, we are looking for it. We're tr we don't, there's a lot of rides we don't even have any photos or video of. Um, and I'm trying to really just gather it all together because when we do this, it's taken a long time. We've already been working on this for like over a year now, trying to get everything together. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's a slow process. And one of the sad things is, is when we finished up the Angelo Park project at Samsung Productions, people then wanted to donate stuff. They're like, oh, we saw it. It was really good. Can we still give you stuff? No, you can't. It's it's over. We finished Unless it. Unless you do a sequel. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, but that's there's... why the Rocky Glen was so successful because the second time they got people who said, "Wow, I got stuff in my closet." And right. the, sometimes the second cut is better than the, the right. initial yeah. run. Yeah. I don't want to do two cuts. No, so no, no. I want one and done. <laughs> but I want it to be the best it could possibly be. And without the help of the you know the the public out there by donating stuff, there is absolutely no way it's going to be the best that it could be because I honestly don't have any of this stuff. You know, and everyone out there does. So if you could, if you could just donate stuff to the project, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, remember, if you do have something from Hanson's, photograph, any kind of video, you're not, you're not giving it away forever, right? Yeah, no, we, we give it back. So if you donate film or video, you actually get a free copy of the DVD. Plus, we digitize everything that you gave us. So then we give you the digital file. Now, obviously, you won't get the copy of the DVD until later because we're still working sure, on it. Sure. But then we give everything back to you. So then you have a digital copy of what you gave us, and you actually have the original copy of what you gave us. Right. So we don't want to keep anything. Now, sometimes people will just donate stuff to us and say, hey, keep it. So then what we'll do after the, the project is uh, closed up, we then take that to the Historical Society to, to oh, then donate it to them so that they have preservation of what's going on. Because sure. there isn't much at Historical Societies. When it comes to these things, like Angela Park, there was nothing there on yeah. it. They just had a, a, sure. a cardboard sign that said, Save Angela Park. And yet Park they were it. such a vital part of the area history. Right. See, but if, it wasn't in the city. Yeah. See, oh, yeah. see well, that's, that's so why it was, exactly. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. in the city. That's yeah. why so little exists. Right. Which is another amazing thing about Canobles, because they're not really close to any gigantic right. city. Uh, right. Ellisburg yeah. is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, right. Right. Well, yeah it's it is amazing how it, how, it, how it survived. But, you know, it's one of those things is like, I guess... Retro is coming back, and they just keep getting I, bigger and I bigger. Guess. And they keep getting ranked in the top number one, I think, yeah. for yeah. amusement yeah. places. Customer really friendly, success. only buy a oh, ticket yeah. if you want to go on a ride. That's great customer That's service. Great. That's awesome. It really is. And, and everything's if, affordable. If someone does have something that enhances, how can they get it to you? Um, hopefully, we'll be putting the information wherever th this video is. Uh, but they can uh, email me, timnovo, T-I-M-N-O-V-O, at gmail.com. 
Uh, you can tell me what you have and I can give you in the instructions on where to mail it or if it's local in the area we'll come to you and we'll scan it and just give it right back because some people are a little sentimental they don't want to mail things in. Uh, as with film that's a longer process so you might have we will have to pick it up or you can mail it to us and we'll have to send it back because but they can use the Tim Novo at Gmail Gmail Gmail, Gmail. 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 Gmail.com as the connecting link right anyway. you can email me say hey I have something uh, I don't know how much I have, but because it's on film, I haven't been able to look at it, but we'll be able to look at it and then send it back okay, to you. Okay, now we're going to expect at least one showing right here in ECTV. That's right. Well, absolutely. Done. That's right. So, yeah. uh, so we'll, be, we'll be looking forward to that. And I'll send that railroad, those railroad photos of the high I've in my collection to you. That okay. is Rusty Tim, Fender. Tim, a great, great so project. <laughs> great project. <laughs> and I you. wish yeah, you a lot of success project. with it. Sound, I'm, I'm, I will be anxious to see it myself. I know that. You and me both. And I know as you are park oh, aficionado. I can't wait. <laughs> Mark McGlory, thanks, thanks for keeping Tim. us in focus. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. I'm David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Until we see you again next time, here's hoping all your news is good.